I'm Jammer, and I'm sure, like many of you, I have put in a lot of hours to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Matter of fact, I've put in a few hundred. And I've been pretty consistent playing every single day, getting my daily chores done, hitting the money rock, talking to villagers, collecting fruit, finding fossils. But after a while, it does get to a point where you're like, well, well, now what? The magic of the game first coming out has started to settle, and the rate of furiously playing constantly at all times can start to be toning down around this point. So I'm sure a lot of you started coming to the thought of, well, I'm bored in Animal Crossing, but I want to keep playing, so what should I do? So that's what today's video is going to be about. Let's go over a few fun activities you can do when you're bored in Animal Crossing. But before we get started, if you aren't here, perhaps consider subscribing. It's free, you can always change your mind later, and you of course can expect tons of more Animal Crossing New Horizons content. So thanks for listening to that. Without further ado, let's get started. One of the great aspects about Animal Crossing, that it's based on real time. If it's 2.30 on a Tuesday for you, it'll be 2.30 on a Tuesday in game. And because of that, just like in real life, the world changes throughout the year with different seasons, so does in Animal Crossing. And with each new month, you will have new fish and new bugs to arrive on your island. So when you're bored, perhaps it's time to start hunting down elusive fish and bugs that you've yet to catch that are brand new in the game this month. Maybe spend some time grabbing a bunch of minute of clams, crafting up some fishing bait, and start taking on the task of fishing for some pier fish. Some of those fish over there are super rare in this game, so it's gonna take a long time for you to get around to it, so it's a nice fun activity to continue your completion of your Critterpedia, as well as submitting them to your museum. Beyond that, you can go hunt for rare bugs. Maybe intentionally chop down a few trees and leave stumps so that you can get some new stump bugs. Or maybe you're daring enough at night to go scorpion hunting. There's all sorts of new bugs, fish, and critters to collect each and every new month, giving you always something to do and continue to complete your Critterpedia. Another thing you can do when you're bored is to go on a Nook Mile expedition. With it, you can try to hunt for a new villager. If you have an empty space in your town and you're trying to find a specific character, you can just go on Nook Mile expedition at one after another to maybe try to hunt a character down that you really like. But if you already have a max villager count, there's still stuff you can do on the expedition. Specifically, try to hunt down the rare islands. Like, for example, the Money Island, where there's an island in the middle of a pond with a bunch of rocks everywhere, and as you hit them, you'll get tons and tons of bells. Or maybe you want to get the rare tarantula slash scorpion island and try to get an inventory full of scorpions to bring back home to sell to Flick or back to Tom Timmy and Tommy to make hundreds of thousands of bells. It's always fun to get off your island, explore a little bit, and run through a couple of Nook Mile expeditions. Another thing to do when you're bored is to make a custom design. I know the pattern maker really isn't for everyone, but it does take a little bit of experimentation to kind of understand how to use it and how to make cool stuff. My best advice is when you're first starting off, try to recreate some of the clothing you wear in a day-to-day -day basis. Or better yet, perhaps try to recreate one of your favorite gaming characters' outfits. Maybe make like a Mario hat or in his overalls. Or recreate a t-shirt from one of your favorite gaming protagonists. An even simpler way is look up some examples of some pixel arts, just like search in whatever character you want. A dog a kitten, doesn't matter. Look up some pixel art examples and maybe try to mimic that in your custom design so you can make a cute little dog wet hoodie. Once you recreate some other stuff and get the knack of how the pattern designer works, then you can go from there and experiment more with your own designs, completely making up your own things and other stuff like that. And beyond just making pro designs, you can also make the regular tile designs that you could use for patterns on the ground, use for your town flag, art pieces, and other fun stuff like that. Another thing to do when you're bored is to maybe design a new area in your town. The Island Designer app can be a really daunting thing, especially when you have such a blank canvas of a town when you first start off. And it really just takes experimenting, playing with the train tools, building rivers, building up cliffs, and just figuring out how to best manipulate the tool and figure out what looks good. It's okay to build up this big area and realize it all looks terrible, tear it all down the next day and restart from scratch. But getting that experience to just play with the tool, understand how it works can really help you get those creative juices flowing so then you can design a brand new area. And beyond just terraforming, you could also design a new area within your town. Some examples could maybe make like a little outdoor cafe, a picnic area, a public park, maybe a DJ concert area, a flower garden, a pool area, a diner. There's a lot of simple and easy area designs that you can make that use only a couple of things that can really help fill in those empty gaps that you have throughout your town. And of course, speaking of designing, when you're bored, you can design a new room in your house. Every player character's town has six entire rooms, and each one could hold a lot of furniture. Some ideas for rooms can be the typical ones that you have in a real life home. Bedrooms, kitchens, bathrooms, hang out little foyer areas with a TV room. But there are so many unique items in this game. 
that can really let you experiment and create really crazy looking rooms. Perhaps maybe you want to make a cafe or a casino, or maybe use a lot of the fossils and tools to make like an archaeological dig site. May another idea is to maybe make one of your rooms like a space station or a surveillance tower. Perhaps you want to make a secret underground lab where you can do your experiments. Or maybe you can even make the front area room a diner where there's seating tables and you can pretend to be the server. There's a lot of unique ways you can take advantage of the rooms in your house that aren't just simple bedroom stuff, but there's nothing wrong with doing those too. But if you run out of ideas to what to do and take advantage of your rooms, maybe think a little bit out of the box. I'd love to hear some of your ideas for room designs in the comments below. Another thing to do when you're bored is, well, just make a lot of bells. Perhaps maybe take advantage of the stock market, buy a bunch from Daisy May on Sunday, and link up with people online trying to find turn good turnip prices and sell for millions of bells. Or maybe you're just gonna run around the town and fish a lot and just fish for profit and fish as much as you can to sell and keep filling your drop-off box with as many as possible. There's a ton of great different methods and ways to make money and it's always a fun way to pass the time because if you're making bells, you'll always be productive. And probably the best thing to do when you're bored in Animal Crossing is play with friends. Like they say at the beginning of the game, Animal Crossing is a game meant to be shared. So sync up with friends, sync up with people online, and get a tour of a friend's island. Check out what they've got going on, check out the designs they have in the outside of their town, check out their house, and maybe you can get some inspiration from what they have to then include into your own town. While you're playing with friends, there's so many different activities you could do. You could host a fashion show where each of you walk down a runway with a bunch of your different wand outfits, and everyone will rate the outfit on a scale of 1 to 10. Maybe you want to play a mini game like hide and seek, and have all your friends hide throughout your town and someone runs around trying to find everyone. Maybe you want to host a treasure hunt event where maybe you hide bell bags around scattered throughout your town and you let your friends go and just search around trying to find and explore and find all the little secrets. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be as structured as that. Maybe you have a meteor shower at your town and you and your friend just want to hang out and farm some shooting star fragments. Just hanging out, talking and chatting, and just wishing on every star possible. Really, when it comes to internet crossing, it's always better played together. So like I mentioned earlier, if you're trying to complete your Critterpedia or catch the rare pier fish, why not do it with friends? It's always a blast when some of them catches an ore fish out of complete random and everyone just goes absolutely nuts. Perhaps even work together to design one of the rooms in your house. Maybe have them come in, give you a few pointers, maybe even give you some furniture that they brought, you quickly design it, they come back in, and then you get to experience the new diner or cafe or whatever you were building. And if I hear you saying, well, I don't have friends to play Animal Crossing with, well, do I have news for you? The Jammer Pro HD Discord server is a great place to meet friends, to play Animal Crossing with, trade turnips, and do basically everything I listed about in this video. It is a great, safe, and fun community, and I highly recommend you to join if you're looking for friends to play the game with. The link to that is in the description below. Sorry for that self-plug, but obviously it just, it just made sense. But finally, when it comes to being bored in Animal Crossing, one of the better tips I probably could give is just take a break. Animal Crossing is a game that's meant to be played over long periods. And sometimes, you do run out of things to do in a day. You can only order five items for your catalog, so if you're trying to design a bigger area, you can only get five things at a time each day. It's a game that encourages you to come back each day and play short sessions, check in, do your daily tasks, and then come back later. And so if you do come to a crossroads where you feel like you're bored with Animal Crossing, you don't really know what to do, it's totally fine if you take a break, play some other games, Maybe go on Discord or Reddit and look up other Animal Crossing inspirations to get those creative juices flowing so you can come right back fresh and tackle your next list of objectives and new designs you want to make. But what are some of your favorite things to do when you're bored in Animal Crossing? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big awesome like. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe for tons more on Animal Crossing New Horizons. As a reminder, we stream Animal Crossing every weekend, Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern. And as a reminder, we stream this game every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube Live. We have so much fun hosting you guys on my island, playing different mini games, starting really big, fun terraforming projects. It's a lot of fun, so definitely come on by. Be sure to follow me over on Twitter, as well as join our community Discord like I previously mentioned. It's a great place to find friends to play Animal Crossing with, other Nintendo Switch games, and to keep up to date on everything we do with the channel. I also wanted to say super big shout out to everyone who participated in the five year anniversary. That, oh my gosh, it was just so much fun. The video, the live stream, it all just like worked out and it just, it's, it was just so much fun. So I just had to say a special shout out to you guys for coming through. It was just so much fun, it meant so much to me. I'm so thankful for the growth of our community over these past couple of months and I cannot wait to see what else we achieve and where we go next. So thank you guys again so, so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!